Hello and good morning guys and welcome to another episode of the Interchange World Tour. Today we will be building three pretty cursed looking roundabouts from across Europe. We will be visiting Poland, Spain and the UK. If you're new around here and you feel like you could do with a few more cursed roundabouts in your life, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. So I promised three roundabouts here. Roundabouts maybe aren't necessarily considered interchanges by most, but I think you would still appreciate some of this that we'll be building because they're, they're kind of weird and, uh, you know, who are we kidding? I think they're, they work. <laughs> We're going to be doing a lot of uh, roundabouts, I think, for the Interchange World Tour, to be honest, because I think they're fascinating and uh, especially when they're weird like they are today. So. This first roundabout we're going to be doing is from Spain. It is from outside, outside, outside of the town of uh, uh, A Coruña, La Coruña, Coruña, in Galicia, in the northwestern part of Spain. Um, this roundabout I did not know about until I played Euro Truck Simulator and. Um, came across it in that game. It's a game where you drive trucks basically across Europe and there was this double level roundabout, like it's in two levels and it looked so incredibly weird that I just had to... I had to learn more about it and since then it's been uh, like a place I always go to and like look at and uh, I guess <laughs> admire it. It's, it's, it's very weird, it's very unusual but um, anyway I've never tried to build it before in City Skylines and I feel like even in City Skylines 1 with all my mods I don't know how I would... it would be a pretty struggling experience so I'm excited to try it and uh, and get it working in City Skylines 2 and I... I mean I can kind of spoil it, it, it works out really well it... I don't know if it functions like super well, it seems like a lot of the, the drivers would just pick either the upper level or the, the lower level when they're trans transiting it or like they're going through it but but I do see some traffic on both levels eventually so I guess it kind of works. <laughs> it's a very complicated roundabout by the way it has a total of six um, access directions and if you count like entrances there's probably nine because of the separate upper level so it's a very, it's a very complicated roundabout. I could, I could have probably spent hours and hours making this in CS1 and still not getting really that close to uh, <laughs> what we end up getting in this game. But yeah, so I'm doing. How how should we how should we talk about this? We can talk about like how it's set up. Basically, the roundabout has. A total of like six different directions going into it or going out of it depending on how you how you define that but three of those directions they have a a ramp basically that I'm doing here that goes to the upper level so the upper level only has three connections and they all sort of merge in um, with the main six directions <laughs> City Skylines 2, you can really, really get these ramps, these ramp transitions to work pretty good. Uh, even though they're a little bit finicky at some points, uh, you can see I'm like deleting and redoing them quite a few times. It's not always going to play nice, but I, I really like the basically almost built-in anarchy that, that lets me lets me do this. And you can see sometimes I get like very weird terrain. Um, like the slope gets very weird when I uh, when I connect these outer slip lanes, I guess. But then I just redrag the the road, the central road, the road that goes onto the ramp, and uh, it usually fixes it. So there's like a lot of tricks, uh, and usually the tricks are just delete and do it again. <laughs> um, I mean, still like this build here, I did I did have to t test it like once before I actually recorded. I mean, I did record, but I kind of failed the first the first couple of tries, but uh, the build itself is only 20 minutes long, so it's not a super complicated or long build, really. It's, it's, it's really remarkable how quick this can be done, and you can see we're also adding these uh, 
dedicated right turn. I think these are called slip lanes. I might be using the term liberally, too liberally, I'm sorry. Uh, but we're adding these and trying to match it as close as we can with the real life uh, roundabout. I think I do omit like, I did, there's like one slip lane uh, that I don't add, but I think most of them are there. I should also talk a little bit about the map. I've kind of decided that, you know what? Uh, instead of just restarting a new map every time I want to make a new interchange for this this project, the Interchange World Tour, I'm going to start putting them on one of, the, one of the same map, at least as far as I can. So we are going to be doing, like, or trying to do all our interchanges on this one map and then... Uh, potentially connecting them, which should make some really interesting and weird looking cinematics eventually when we like show a map that's full of just weird looking and, and uh, massive interchanges, <laughs> but nothing else really. Um, it, it does mean I do have to add like a little bit of utilities and like I do eventually add like a small town to support those utilities. So it's not just going to be interchanges, but it's definitely the main point of it. It's not a, it's not supposed to be a functional city, this, uh, this build. <laughs> or not have any functional cities anyway. I mean, I know me, I could get distracted and eventually maybe I decide to make a <laughs> city out of this, all this anyway, but... something I like to do in City Skylines 2 uh, and City Skylines 1 to be honest, like having a um, just make the road wider coming into the roundabout, like add an extra lane, it just makes sense. So you basically have a two directions, uh, like I guess deciding your direction where you're going in the roundabout on your way in and you don't you only need really one lane going out on most roundabouts but uh, two lanes going in is, is usually a, a good call especially if the roundabout I mean it kind of depends is the roundabout a two lane roundabout to start with if it's a two lane roundabout then we can have two lanes going in otherwise maybe we shouldn't even consider it. <laughs> And here I'm using the, like, turning off snapping and trying to, you know, just get it into a better position. Turning off snapping and upgrading is so good. And this is the first roundabout completed. So, moving on to the next roundabout. Uh, this roundabout here is a roundabout from Bejin, Poland, uh, just outside of Katowice. Katowice? Katowice? I don't know how to pronounce that either, uh, as with all things, so I'm probably gonna get uh, taught. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing because I've been taught how to pronounce this, this so many times, but it's basically a double roundabout, and it's a roundabout with trams. So what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a tram roundabout, like a di dedicated roundabout only for trams. And then we're gonna add a roundabout outside of it. That kind of acts as a like rubber band, um, and like looks squished on the outside. It's it's very weird. It's not your it's not your typical tram roundabout. It's absolutely not your typical tram roundabout. Uh, but it definitely is a roundabout, both like topologically and uh, and uh, I guess functionally. Like it's all it's just a <laughs> just a weird weird roundabout. So. I'm doing the tram roundabout with one-way tram tracks to ma make those like turns extra smooth when you're turning into it. The trams do kind of need a little bit better uh, turning, like larger turning radiuses than, uh, than cars, so something I like to add. 
And I decided I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So I'm just upgrading the whole thing a few times using the geometry snapping to make it like a little bit smaller, get it a little bit closer to the center. I think this roundabout was probably the easiest one of the two. Um, I say that because I only tried to record it once. The other two I, I did try a few more times than one, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> this one is a one, a one record build kind of a thing. And it's not really that complicated. It's, it's more that it just looks funny. Uh, <laughs> it's not really that complicated. You could probably build something similar to this in CS1, but if you're not using mods, you would get like, for example, tram tracks doing incredibly steep turns and uh, and just acting weird. So it's still a lot easier to do it in this game. So now I'm creating this outer, this outer roundabout, uh, the road roundabout, you could say. I don't remember who actually first told me about this this roundabout. I think it might have been uh, my friend Pevex. Shout out to her. But it could be... Uh, I have a, like a few other Polish friends in my Discord as well that uh, it might have been any of them. <laughs> it's definitely a thing I did not discover while playing Euro Truck Simulator for this. This one, as far as I know, is not in Euro Truck Simulator, even though I, I wish it would be. <laughs> Speaking of Euro Truck Simulator, there's recently been a huge uh, update, or update this huge DLC for it, uh, the Balkan, uh, Western Balkan DLC, which I might actually want to try and uh, get them play, that would be really fun. I was really excited to, to see the, the West Balkan DLC uh, being the next on the list, but I haven't played a lot of that game recently. I wonder if they have any similar cursed roundabouts. <laughs> kind of looks like a, a sort of weird smiley face. No, not a smiley face. It looks like a mouth, kind of. Or a peanut. Or a bent peanut. A cashew nut. Yeah, I think it's a cashew nut. I showed this to a friend just before recording and they said, yeah, it looks like a cashew nut. Yeah, that makes sense. I see it now. <laughs> Shout out to Alex. And about here I decide, yeah, some of these tram tracks, they sort of enter the roundabout at kind of an angle, so we should try to add that also. It's gonna make it look a little bit more unique. Or unique, it's going to make it look a little bit more like the, the, real, <laughs> the real thing, but also uh, make it look less boring, so. I'm also eyeballing a bit more here than, uh, than I did on the first roundabout, I believe, like just turning off all the snapping. Eyeballing in this in this game honestly works even better than it than it did in City Skylines 1, so that's a good metric as well. I really like to eyeball. Or like it's one of those things. I I don't think I like to do it, but I know it works. It just sort of it's one of those uh, really good tricks. Sometimes when you can't get something to work perfectly like you want it, then you just need to sort of let let go of all the all the ideas of perfection and then just sort of eyeball it and and uh, I think this game really lets you do that and uh, makes me happy.
So we're very soon done with this roundabout as well. I'm going to change up this connection a little bit because the real life um, the real life roundabout has this very weird node here. Uh, I don't know if it's called a node in real life, but it kind of looks a little bit dangerous. I don't think it's ideal for it. <laughs> a roundabout really, but uh, we're gonna try to simulate it here. It's basically a very free-flowing uh, uh, node, you could say. Which which would mean that anybody coming into this uh, would sort of be able to do this at, at a pretty high speed. And if you're doing this at a pretty high speed, you may be not worrying so much about what other traffic is. I mean, like you feel safer. <laughs> and then... Uh, then there's this sort of merge and split at the same node. It's a little bit wonky. I, I don't know if we control it with traffic lights. And here, just redoing this tram connection a little bit to get... Um, to get the node to render properly. Sometimes when the nodes are too close to each other, it will like do a little bit of clipping. I think all these these graphical glitches and stuff like that are perfectly fine for for the the benefit of getting like more anarchy when it comes to this, or like less less limits. A few like graphical glitches like this is something I am perfectly happy to live with. There we go, there is the Bejin roundabout. So for the third and final roundabout of this episode, we are going to be doing a, a pretty famous one. This is the by far the most famous of the all. This is from Swindon, UK, the magic roundabout. And this one I struggle with, <laughs> I will say for quite a few times. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm dragging out roads at 72 degree angle from each other. Just to create a guide where to, uh, where to create the smaller roundabouts. Because this is a roundabout that's built up of maybe five smaller roundabouts. So uh, we really need to... Uh, space them out like in a good way. I don't think the real one has like a perfect 72 degree angle between all the roundabouts, but um, it makes it easier to mass produce it here and like just make it. I also should say something about this. Since this one is in the UK, it is actually a left hand traffic or a left side traffic, right hand drive uh, roundabout, but I'm inverting it because my map is uh, right hand traffic or left hand drive <laughs> so uh, just keep that in mind it's not it's not perfectly the same also it's not going to be perfectly the same in amount of uh, when it comes to the lanes and such such things so lane numbers in real life this one has a lot more lanes if you could call them lanes it's it's in real life it looks more like just one huge piece of mess uh, whereas what i build look like looks like several small roundabouts connected Basically, the idea of this roundabout is that you can you can travel through it in many ways and still reach your destination. You can you can take a uh, the outer route and just take a, a right turn uh, and just follow it around all the roundabouts like you would a normal roundabout, right? Like just go the outer lap. <laughs> but you can also take a left turn in the first roundabout and and um, get to the inner roundabout, which is basically a um, 
a counter flow roundabout, I guess, com compared to the, the outer one. So there's like multiple ways. And if I'm not like completely mistaken, this thing actually works pretty good for what it's supposed to. Like it's not, a, it's not just a, uh, a laughing stock. It's not just something we just make fun of. It's actually something that's, uh, it works perfectly fine in the circumstances it exists in. <laughs> Uh, there's also probably a reason why they, they don't build these everywhere, so, uh, <laughs> it's definitely an intriguing thing, and, like, if, I mean, if I ever go to the UK, I've never actually been to the, prop, the UK proper, but if I ever go to the UK, if I go to Swindon, there's no way I'm not visiting this. This is a, this is, like, attraction for me. I would, I would want to see this in real life. To be honest, that goes for all three of these. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a nerd, but, um. My, my point is that sometimes you don't just build, I mean, there's like, even if you build infrastructure that's bad, don't underestimate, uh, I guess, like nerds like me. I, I will visit your nerdy, uh, weird infrastructure and I will, I guess, pay for a transit to get there. I will, I will buy snacks on my way. I, I will actually, it's a tourist attraction, right? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. It should have a tourist attractiveness uh, rating in this game. Yeah, I, I don't know how, how much that uh, sort of is worth uh, the investment of building something weird like this, but just saying, I would I would pay to visit something like this. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so here I'm connecting the roundabouts using like an outer, um, making an outer road, and it's a little bit tight, so I'm struggling sometimes getting the getting the nodes to behave. Sometimes it's trying to snap them into a, uh, like snap everything into a common node instead of having like separate nodes. So it's a little bit finicky, but um, with some moving it around using the, the remove snapping um, upgrading, you can get it to behave pretty nicely. Like I cannot overstate how important the, the snapping tools will be for City Skylines 2, like figuring them out because None of this would be possible without without just doing the snapping tool, uh, just turning it on and off all the time or, and changing the different settings. So you can see I'm using quite a lot, a lot of the time for this, I'm turning off the snapping altogether and trying to get like very, very precise control of where, where the network go, networks go and hope that it will do an automatic connection. It is also like in the vicinity of this roundabout where I build the the first sort of utility town or whatever you would want to call it on this map. So, so in the cinematics there will be a small town with a few services just next to this roundabout. One downside of doing the roundabout this way is that the, the giveaway signs are not accurate. Uh, I have managed to do this with accurate-ish giveaway signs uh, and giveaway rules, I suppose, as well. But um, for this attempt, some of the roundabouts, uh, I just couldn't prevent the giveaway signs from spawning, spawning in the incorrect locations. So uh, I also couldn't be bothered to completely uh, make it one-to-one, -one, but... Uh, I think this is close enough, and this is also going to be the end of the video. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.